welcome back guys this is going to be a short tutorial but then this is the beginning of uh, how to implement uh, the basic listing screen for the grocery app which i am already start which i already started in the previous tutorial uh, but then i wanted to actually include some of the things uh, for this let's say like uh, i have a listing screen right now which will actually show uh, the list of uh, groceries which i need to select from so that is a listing screen which i am going to start today which will have uh, i was i was thinking of having uh, a service api integration where i have a server where a rest api call can be done but then i have parked it for the second uh, the next uh, uh, tutorial because otherwise this will become a little lengthier than expected so i thought it's better that i keep for the next one but then for this one what i'm going to try doing is um, i have a json embedded file in the project which i'll be using to i'll be using it to parse and then list all the uh, all the grocery items in the listing screen so in, intention of this tutorial is to start off the viper architecture project which has the elements of uh, view models also so that's the idea here and uh, with this base from the next tutorial tutorial we can actually start with uh, the navigation from one screen to the other even realm integration realm is a database which you will use in this one you if preferred you can also use core data but then i prefer to have realm integration in this one but any database can be used so we will have uh, um, an implementation where you can easily replace a database so that is one of the things i'll be concentrating concentrating in the next one but then in this one we are going to create a stub service which is more like uh, you are mocking your service using some functions which will read this uh, products json which i have created so let me just start uh, showing you whatever i have right now let's go with it so if you see i have a json file right now it's plain simple json where i have groceries array which has uh, different items like uh, apple watermelon grapes and everything just dummy stuff which i'll be using to list in the first screen so that's what we are concentrating today and uh, i have a cell right now something similar to this where i'll use this data to load it so it will be using view model so as i said viper is an architecture in which you can also include some sub architectures like it's i won't call view models in this as an architecture it's just that your ui can be then made it in a way where it becomes testable and if needed you can integrate uh, rx swift in the future easily so that is one other thing which which is not part of the scope of this project at least because i'm not going to integrate rx swift in this one it will be more of closures and protocols uh, to actually communicate between different layers so continuing with this i have a home view controller right now which has nothing right now we will add a table view here and then if you have not followed my previous tutorial then you have uh, a modules creation uh, viper episode where i'll i had shown like how you can create a module and then launch it from the app delegate so that is what i am using as a base right now for this project so i have a view controller which has let's say a view and then i have implemented it in the view so that uh, let's say a presenter if, if it wants to know about the view controller it will know through this home view protocol so if you want to refer refer back the previous pro pre previous episode the first episode where i had explained all this so i have even a router and the home use case so let's start off with <clears throat> whatever we have right now the products json so <clears throat> to read this let me start by creating a group for uh, stub service so i'm just calling it stub service and within that stub service let me create a service named uh, again step service i need to rename I'm, i was supposed to create this as a step service so the json the swift file will be 
call step service but this one I prefer to call as service API because <clears throat> or HTTP service which is that which is what I am planning to integrate in the future like this step service will become like a stuff for your let's say if you are using alamo fire i'm going to plan to use alamo fire in this one so it will work as a stuff for your alamo fire if you don't have the server ready then you can use this stuff server for testing so that's what intention but that is for the next tutorial for this one it's just a service class i'll call it uh, step service and i'll also have a protocol defined just for my groceries API so this is something <clears throat> this is something which uh, I'll be using um, let's say in the stub as well as the real uh, services where this is the same similar approach where I'll be defining different protocols and then implementing it within the let's say stub server or the actual uh, service which I'm creating so this stub server I'm whatever I'm trying to do right now is to fetch the existing groceries so that's my function definition and maybe I'll just create a closure here let me just call it as grocery groceries closure or something and it will return some type which I'm going to define later but let's just keep it like this that's my closure so on completion this is what I'm going to use so that's my definition I'll implement it uh, here maybe as a step service implements this one so that I implement this as well <clears throat> so completion is returning this type so that's my definition or the implementation of the service so let's just uh, go to the implementation now so if I need to read this JSON I need to use something like um, <clears throat> <clears throat> first thing is to define the URL so now let's import foundation for that bundle dot main dot um, <clears throat> URL and you'll be using which one for resource with extension we'll just use this for resource which is my products file which I have right now here and of type JSON <clears throat> so that's my file which I'm trying to read and uh, if that URL exists then I it, I should be able to read the data uh, so let's do a uh, let uh, just call it as data <coughs> try uh, data which will read the contents of the JSON and just contents of the URL so I just need to add a catch block so that's my data <coughs> and uh, let's 
get the before this we need to create a, a model so let's create a model section and let me just call that as grocery result create that grocery result and let that implement uh, codable so for whatever we are defining will be whatever is available in this products.json file which is the um, so i have this codable result and then i also need to have the individual items let's say if it is grocery if i call it grocery it should also implement codable and let me define the first uh, groceries the first property grocery so that's an array which i'll be reading from this products.json groceries is an array so that's what is the first um, results part and within the grocery item section i need to define sku id which is of type string then i have uh, SKUID title image details and price these are the five things so title image maybe I can just call it as maybe I can keep it as image itself then details and finally price which is of type double that's my grocery codable model so let's check what all things i need to add keys for so it is sqi sku id and product to make these are the two things <clears throat> so for that let's create an enum <clears throat> which will be coding keys string coding key that's how you define something which is different from whatever is the response so if you have to use this let's say if it is sku id looks different from whatever you have different then you can create this uh, coding keys rest of things still you will have to add title does not change image for me is product image so also add that then i have details no change there as well and price finally so these are my properties so it's different okay so this is the problem <coughs> so this is pretty much my models let's continue with the results side so this is what i'll be parsing and using so <coughs> if i go back to my stub server if i am like parsing my data then first thing first uh, this should return a grocery result type so let's do that now I have the data so I have to use uh, let's say codable here then my uh, grocery result will be try your JSON decoder dot <clears throat> decode 
of type uh, grocery result dot self data will be this data so that's my data and in this block maybe I'll just print that something went wrong with uh, error is equal to so error handling will come back when we are actually implementing the real server this is just for the representation sake right now just keep that error here and finally for this closure after you have received this closure result the grocery result let's just pass that through this completion block grocery result <clears throat> so it's expecting that to be even here this is of this type let's keep that so that we don't need to change it at multiple places <clears throat> So that's pretty much what uh, the stub server is going to right now do. It just fetches the groceries items, the products from the products.json file, get the data item, and then decode the uh, data, pass it through the completion handler. So that's pretty much what the stub server is going to do. And let's go back to where the stub server needs to be used. So for that, uh, it starts with the interactor. So this is where um, the service is going to be injected and which will actually consume and then use it to fetch the results. So that's what we are going to do right now. So I have a home use case, which is the definition. So in that, let's define similar function. Let's just call it get groceries. And like the other way where we are we had uh, defined uh, uh, the closure let's create a completion here as well and then let it be that same type of closure groceries or closure so that's my definition now i'll have to implement that here extension home interactor um, so it get groceries and within this init we need to pass that service so let's just call this service and uh, it'll be of type uh, this specific groceries API type that's what we will inject the protocol instead of the whole service so let's just do that and then let's create a variable for that service and then so from service is equal to service so we have the service uh, implementation available here and it's asking for so this will trigger a change here so let's do that in builder we already have it just check back in the previous tutorial how we created this and then how we passed all the dependencies so in now because we need to handle the specific use case we will have to pass the uh, groceries api or the service stuff which we created as a dependency to your interactor that's that's what we are doing here so let's do that we have the stub server so before that let's go back to the stub server and create it as a singleton so let's just create a singleton stub server And then just let's instantiate it through this so that's my stub server maybe I also create a private in it that's it now it's a pure singleton so that's my interactor consuming the stub service now to do its work so next to work is to actually get the uh, grocery item so let us let's call the service dot uh, fetch groceries which is again a closure type 
so all that we need to do is to get the results result which grows release is calling this and then getting that result and within this closure <clears throat> Uh, let's just call this completion and pass that result so this is a simpler situation but when we have a database as well available let's say if it is something we are fetching and then we also need to save it to the database or the local one then this is something where it will happen like once the fetch is complete that completion block then maybe we'll just call the database uh, protocol Whatever you have defined then maybe call a save and then maybe that call will trigger an observable or something which we already defined or uh, if it's let's say a realm database or something which works with um, notification blocks or you can subscribe to the realm notification results so that is something which will happen but in this case we are just returning it back to the uh, present so that it can send it back to after processing and making into a view model or something it can send it back to the view controller for further um, uh, updation of the table view which we will define so right now whatever we have is uh, uh, in the view in the interactor we have defined this get groceries uh, function in that we are calling the service function called fetch groceries which ideally will be hitting an API uh, HTTP server and then get a response back and then but in this case we have just created a products json and using that to fetch this so this is again using a closure to return this so ideally when we call this get groceries from the present it should return this uh, data so we are in a state where we have this get groceries available in the home dashboard home interactor let's go to the presenter so in the presenter i'm i'm at least expecting when the app is launching or when the home screen is launching it should get me the current set of results so that's why we already have a view read load defined in the presenter which is actually mocking or mimicking whatever should happen in the view did load of a view controller if you are in the mvc world you will write everything in that view did load that such what just we have moved and delegated that work to the presenter so that presenter can ask uh, different layers to do its work so this is what we are going to do right now we are calling the interactor to actually get the groceries listing right now so that's my result available here which is like a, i'll just call it as result itself which is of type right now that model groceries result i'll use that to now uh, as I am in the present uh, now it's this is where if I have to let's say transform my data of model to a view model or something this is where it should happen so let's create a view model for my uh, cell which is this one so whatever I need to represent right now I'll transform it as a view model and send it to this cell so that it can configure and show your data so I'm still in the uh, presenter let me just create it here itself so let me just call that as grocery item view model because each item is actually representing my cell so let me define just prop some properties I need to show the title I don't need the SKU and everything here because I can use the title I'm just whatever I need for representation is what I'll have, I'll use then let me also have the details thing the image and uh, the price these are the four things which I'm representing right now in that cell price is a string because this is more a representation thing so we will have to convert that uh, value which received in um, in as double we'll use that and transform it to let's say show this dollar this much kind of so let's do that so i have the view model ready grocery item view model i'll have an init right now which is accepting 
the model now which is the grocery model and grocery it's of type grocery that's what it is asking for and then using that I'll just set the details of the <coughs> it's the same title is not changing and then the details image no change because it's only going to get transformed when it is uh, loaded in the cell this will change right now I have the price that I need to transform so I'll just do a dollar and maybe the grocery model dot uh, price so that's transformed now so I have the view model ready so whatever I'll do here is to do a result dot groceries dot compact map so this is actually transforming your data so in this compact map I'll just pass the grocery item view model using dollar zero dollar zero is actually sending one by one using this compact map it is sending all the non nil values to this and then using that it is converting into the grocery item view model and finally this is returning you a non nil array so let's use that let me just call it as grocery list is this it's transforming it into the grocery list and next thing is i have the data right now i just need to send it to the uh, view so for that let's go back to our view controller i have a home view here i'm just going to create a function saying update groceries and it will pass the groceries list which is of which is an array type of grocery item view model so that's my home view let's just implement that here grocery what did I define I update groceries so this is where you're going to receive the fetched data this is where you're going to reload your table view and everything so whenever there is a change happening this is where the table view reload will happen so let's just go back we have implemented this fine and uh, just let's do a sanity right here grocery list print and see what's going on that's my grocery list so if I go back to my presenter this is what I have so I have the access to the view right now through the protocol which I defined and I'll just call the update groceries and just pass the groceries list pretty much done so some threading dancing let's do that dispatch dancing right now because maybe if this is has to run in the background right let's just do that here and once you need to update your date or your view let's run in the main thread so let's do that dancing here itself like uh, I'll just call Swift I have some utility function what do you call that the completions here which I'll use let's just move this the asynchronous work I'm just moving into the background and once I receive the list maybe I'll just move that to the main thread so over here <coughs> self weak reference all good now <clears throat> all clean up so what are we doing here so let's just go back from view controller 
what's going on when the app is launching when you are launching the home view it will call the presenters view did load and when you go to the presenters view did load you have this function call happening to the interactor the get groceries so that's here which in turn is calling the service which we had defined ideal world which typical from the server fetch the data but for in this case we have a products.json file using which we are just loading those details so that's happening here and once you receive that grocery list item you have defined a update groceries in in your view controller which is like impl which is def defined in your home view protocol that is actually referring uh, actually um, uh, referring your home view controller or actually representing that's a word I wanted to use representing your view controller and using that which is calling this which in turn will get called here and ideally right now if you run the application before implementing the table view if I run the application it should just print whatever listing I have done right now let's see that once run this okay something is listed let's go there yeah so that's the print grocery listing done here grocery list perfect so we have the data right now all that we need to do is represent it let's define our table view right now it's easier now so wiper as an architecture we have defined and defined our features as well using use cases and everything so now it's all a matter of showing that data Let me just give a spacing so I can add a title there. Now it's pretty simple for us. Regular, whatever we are used to do, used to doing, like have this table implementation. You already have the list. Just show it. Have a table label. Let me just call it as pick fresh groceries just a little bit styling for my sake hmm. contents bold Be a different color, yeah. Now it's more like a cakewalk for us. What's that? cleanly defined right now so this is some basic stuff but when we actually go into in depth of searching and everything I'll include that even the title I'm going to use the view controllers title right now it's just for the sake I'm just you doing this but, uh, we'll do that later when we move on to the next episode so this is defined table view is defined let's go and add the reference outlet table view that's it let's get on with implementing that first thing you have the table view create an extension home view controller and uh, UI table view data source and self for root index. 
okay so we already have a definition for the cell this is going to be let's define a variable for our groceries list that's what we are going to use as our uh, data source for the table view let's call it data source which is an array of uh, view model which we created grocery item view model let's just instantiate that data source number of rows in section table view too much of definitions dot count is what it's going to return and in the cell for row it index let's pick the first view model which we need to use to configure our cell so i have the data source index path dot row will give me the current uh, view model let's define the cell table view dq reusable cell with identifier string let's define one here uh, private static let uh, maybe grocery cell id Let's give the same name maybe. that's it go back to your identifier home view controller dot grocery cell id and the index path just just pass that that's it and now just return the cell before that let's go back to our cell grocery item cell define a function called configure using view model which is the view model grocery item view model that's it and use that to configure your cell view model dot title details image products image view dot image will be UI image named string we have it here so uh, image so let me just show you what images I have I have added some images which will be used by some fruit images which uh, will be you which which are pointed in this points uh, products JSON that's what I'm using let's go back and I'm using that to uh, configure this cell and then price sorry view model lot price so that's pretty much the configure part I also need to add it's already added add back control which is which will be used to send the selected item to the bank which is our uh, uh, shopping bag so that's not implemented yet that's something which i'll be using to demonstrate the realm side because that's when the actual save happens so implementation of that i'll show in the next episode so this is configured i have the configure now so let's just go back here after the cell is uh, dequeued let's just call the configure so i need to point it as the specific cell grocery item cell after that cell dot configure using this view model which we used or uh, uh, indexed here so that's that's what we have right now so in the update before even that let's just do some more stuff so for the table view i need to register the cell using the nib
nib name is grocery item cell and identifier we have already defined dot grocery item so table view register is done next thing is to set the data source also so let's define this as well the delegate which we will use for navigation in the next next section so i'll just use this for setting the height of the table view for the time sake home view controller implement cui table view delegate So uh, let me just return 100 because that's the height I have defined for the cell. So that's not complete. We need to do one more thing here. We need to set whatever we are receiving as data source to the groceries as the groceries list. Not yet complete. One more thing. I'll reload the table view whenever you are receiving it. So that's also done. So that even you can define here as a did set. Whenever did set happens, you can do that even here. So that's one point where data set is going to get uh, changed only one place whenever update groceries is happening so i guess we are pretty much done with whatever we need to implement for this tutorial let's run just check check once what's going on oh my tea is cold works shows you pick fresh groceries and whatever i have defined is here now so this is just an implementation of MVVM within Viper architecture. So Viper's responsibility is well defined and the V is also standing for this view model. So if you don't have this, if you even have this view model, it becomes testable in this case as well. So it's not that in Viper you cannot have view models. It's not something which is valid. You can also have it it's like for configuring your cells or some controls or anything similar it's just for this configuration we can use it so that's that's pretty much what i wanted to implement in this one this is like the beginning of the bigger implementation which we are going to do so this is my listing screen maybe i'll just have some more things added in the products json maybe i'll also have some categories defined some some more things for the next episode where you can have different navigations uh, being created using that so that's when we will start using the router part in this project we are not yet touched the router yet and we will include database in the next one so pretty much covered whatever i wanted to cover in this one so until the next episode keep watching and um, if you need the code access early access then go to the patron site i have given the link in the description section you can go there and contribute something and get your code base uh, and if you need any support then you can also go to patron site and then get me engaged uh, if you need any support so that's it from my end see you in the next one bye